To the Inupiat Eskimos of Alaska's North Slope, the name Teshekpuk means the largest lake of all. To biologists, Teshekpuk means more than just a lake. It's one of the most important wetland ecosystems for wildlife, especially birds, in the entire Arctic. Positioned at the heart of the Arctic coastal plain, a vast wetland stretching across northern Alaska, the Teshek Puk wetlands are a center of diversity, abundance and productivity, supporting wildlife populations in Alaska and on a global scale. For most of the year, they are locked in ice and snow, but in June, the rays of the midnight sun thaw the surface, revealing a vast system of lakes, ponds, rivers, and marshes. These are the Teshek Puk wetlands, and soon they will be teeming with life. Shorebirds, loons, ducks, geese, and other birds arrive en masse and begin the business of courting mates, building nests, and ultimately producing and raising their young. Here, during the brief Arctic summer, they find the food, safety, and conditions they need to produce a new generation. In all, the Teshek Puk wetlands are a nursery for more than 45 Arctic bird species. Some undergo epic migrations, spanning the globe to be here. The buff-breasted sandpiper from the pampas of Argentina. The bar-tailed godwit from New Zealand. The red-throated loon from coastal Asia. And the Arctic tern from the waters off Antarctica. The tiny semi-palmated sandpiper, weighing about as much as five nickels, wings its way from wintering grounds as far away as coastal South America. Like many, they depend on these productive wetlands to fuel their reproduction and their return south. Other birds come to Alaska from wintering grounds in other states. Tundra swans arrive with lifelong mates from the coastal marshes of Virginia and the Carolinas. Greater white-fronted geese from the Gulf Coast marshes of Texas and Louisiana. And Lapland longspurs from farmlands across the heartland of America. A few, like the nomadic snowy owl, might have spent the entire winter in the far north. The wetlands also provide safe breeding habitat for threatened species like the spectacled eider. And for other species like the long-tailed duck. King Eider and Dunlin, whose populations have declined in recent years. Not only are the Teshek Puk wetlands important to many breeding birds, but the area is unique and essential for another reason its productivity. Up here, we have found that the shorebirds and the waterfowl are breeding more successfully. And in the jargon of ecology, we consider this region a source region for reproduction. That is, that across all of the North Slope, that this region is probably most important for the production of offspring for future generations. We know that this Teshekpuk region is very important for the production of shorebirds that affects all of Arctic Alaska. And because these birds migrate all around the world, it really matters elsewhere on the planet as well. Each spring, caribou, whose winter wanderings may have taken them as far as 300 miles away from Teshek Puk, begin their trek back to the wetlands. Crossing rivers, tundra, and for some, the mighty Brooks Range. 
45,000 animals converge like clockwork in June. This is their sanctuary. Here they find the seclusion, forage, and safety from predators they need to birth their young. The health and success of this caribou herd is important to people too. In northern Alaska, this herd is relied upon by subsistence hunters from seven native communities. In midsummer, more geese begin to arrive. In some years, nearly a hundred thousand. Here they find the safety and seclusion they need during the most vulnerable period in their life cycle. The annual molt of flight feathers when they are unable to fly. They form large flocks, relying on the open water of large lakes around Teshekpuk to escape disturbance and predators. They also find the rich forage they need to fuel the growth of new feathers and fatten for migration. Brant, greater white-fronted geese, snow geese and cackling geese travel to these lakes from as far away as the Russian and Canadian Arctic. Up to one-third of the entire population of Brant in the Pacific Flyway molt here in any given year. After growing new feathers, geese fly south for the winter, revealing how the Teshek Puk wetlands are linked to the rest of our continent. Geese, banded by researchers at Teshek Puk, have turned up in hunters' bags throughout North America. The Teshek Puk wetlands, along with 70% of all wetlands on Alaska's Arctic coastal plain, are located in one of the nation's largest blocks of public land, the National Petroleum Reserve. At more than 23 million acres, this wild, remote landscape contains many areas like the Teshek Puk wetlands, critical to wildlife. For species like the yellow-billed loon, this wilderness is their stronghold. More than 80% of their U.S. population breeds here. East of the National Petroleum Reserve, oil development is currently widespread. Since 1980, the U.S. Department of the Interior has opened parts of the reserve for commercial oil and gas exploration. The Teshek Puk region has always received special recognition because of its importance to wildlife but there is now pressure to expand oil and gas activity across much of the Arctic, including into the Teshek Puk wetlands. There is room for energy development in Arctic Alaska and for protection of the special areas that are so important for wildlife and for people. The growing effects of global climate change are already being seen in the Arctic, and wildlife needs space and time to adapt undisturbed. The Teshek Puk wetlands are the core nursery for many of the Arctic species most at risk in our changing world. 